Hi, I'm Charlie. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, I uh, have my own educational company that uh, we, I offer myself as a tutor and educational consultant and then I've been developing OER for a few years, uh, teaching ESL, and I use those in my classes. And this is something I've been researching for about a year. It's collaborative lesson planning. And what we have here is the uh, Pirate Pet, uh, Etherpad. And if you want to join, um, the short URL is is.gd slash okcon 2011 CLP. Um, anybody with a computer, welcome to join. And then down here, I'll have my points. And if you want to just type notes or questions or whatever. Um, OK. So I need to start typing. It's really easy. All right, so what is collaborative lesson planning? Collaborative lesson planning is exactly what it sounds like. It's a method for teachers to uh, work together making lesson plans. Um, for example, if you have a history textbook, chapter four, section two, there's probably hundreds of other teachers around the US, if not the world, using that same textbook and chapter, and there's no reason you all shouldn't be talking to each other and making the same lesson plans and making them better. And then the next year, anybody start teaching that subject, they'll have a huge archive of lesson plans to go through. Um, and so obviously, okay, so that's an introduction. And then uh, to grab your attention, uh, the joke, if you uh, know the answer, please be silent. Uh, the joke is, how, how long does it take to finish university? You can raise your hands. Or just shout out answers. Four years. Four years? No. A lifetime. No, not a lifetime, not four years. We give up. I do. <laughs> All right, well, the answer is a second. I guess to say the word. Ha uh ha. -huh. Um, <laughs> that's taught to me by actually a Chinese colleague. So she's a, that's cool, she's just a mean English joke. But, um, and that relates to this um, how long will it take for collaborative lesson planning to work? So I don't know yet. I've been trying for about a year. And, um, so the way I developed a, uh, how to implement it, and um, so if you, um, you can click the link to see the GIF, or it's here. This is a PDF, you can find this on my website. Um, but so, step one. Want to improve your lesson plans in the easiest, quickest way possible. Step two. Have permission from your employer to publish your lesson plan, or if you already control the copyright, be willing to release some of your rights. <coughs> Three, license your rights for reuse. Um, so these two steps are pretty easy for everybody in this audience, but for a lot of people that's, um, like they don't have the copyright control, or they do, and they're not really aware of ways to use it as, yeah. And then four, publish your lesson plans online where others can, teachers can find them. So this is, um, I publish a lot of my stuff on Wikiversity and on my own website, and, uh, Yes, yeah, so you want to publish, there's other places, connections, or all sorts of stuff we've talked about. You want to put it somewhere where people are going to find it. Um, or five, find lesson plans and other educational resources that can make your stuff better. Asynchronous collaboration. Ideally, also talk to the people who authored what you find to collaborate. So, within this, like, if you already have your lesson plans, great. And then, to make them better, instead of making new stuff, try to find stuff that's already out there. And just reuse that. Um, curate more than create because it's just um, there's already too much stuff out there especially um, within ESL or things so um, the idea is more to uh, more to you know instead of just having lots of stuff on stuff that's really good that's tech tested in the classrooms and that is you know that's based on stuff like I made a textbook and I used a couple of Project Gutenberg books so they're public domain they were released in like 1905 but like, they're it's teaching English. English has changed, but not too much. And like, so I already have this whole textbook. I don't need to like do something new. I need to pick and choose from that what I need. All right. Uh, number six is um, idea sex, and um, the idea with idea sex is basically what it sounds like. You want your ideas to meet other people's ideas, and so on and so forth. The uh, rational optimist is a really good explanation of this idea. You want to read it? And then um, number seven. Deliver a better, better lesson plan and publish your review. Now you've made it possible for any teacher to build off your work, improve their lessons, and give you feedback so you can make your lessons better. And then number eight, restart the cycle from step four. 
So as an illustration, another way to think about this is like a water cycle. So like you make the lesson plans, goes up in the atmosphere, and you teach it, and then, sorry, and then it comes back down when you teach it, and then you put, put out the new version with the review back into the water, and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, that image is public domain from the U.S. Geological Survey. Okay. For the pad, uh, is.gd slash okcon 2011 CLP. That didn't really help. Okay. Um, all right. So, um, history of CLP. So, I started formally um, introducing this last summer at Wikimania. I gave a talk, which you can read there. Um, and um, I came to start doing this because I was teaching English in Japan. And um, I got off the plane and had a wonderful two-day conference at the, one of the nicest hotels in the world, the Keio Plaza, and then got dumped in my town of 4,000 people with no real training for how to be a teacher or how to teach English or materials to use. Um, so, it, um, so then I had to you know, do a lot of research and try to find out how to teach well because I wanted to teach well. And um, I ended up like I ended up finding stuff eventually, but for the most part, there wasn't a lot of stuff out there, and it wasn't easy to find. And then when I did find it, and I started using it, it was like all rights reserved or um, different things that made it difficult to use. So um, the big idea with this is not reinventing the wheel. Like I had to reinvent, I had to make color flashcards for my students. Like that is insane. Like color flashcards are the simplest thing. They've been around for thousands, not thousands, a lot of long time. Nobody should have to make color flashcards again. That's just a complete waste of my time, waste of the Japanese government's money paying me to do that. So, so the idea is to stop reinventing the wheel. Make the wheel better. And then um, I did a couple of courses on PDPU um, in cycles four and five. Cycle four was last October. Cycle five was in the spring. At that point, PDPU was more of a, um, it was this set up in six week cycles that were offered, where you offer a course, and um, we got a lot of interest from in people in different parts of the world, and uh, it didn't necessarily, I mean, we didn't get a lot of follow through on everything. People really struggled with the, uh, just like having lesson plans and putting them out it was just really a tough thing for people to get around. Um, and then, uh, but one positive thing that did come out, no, a lot of positives came out of it. One of the biggest positives was that um, one of the people in the course, he, uh, he had some struggles in his own course, and then he wrote about it, and he ended up coining this phrase, paragogy, which paragogy is a theory of peer-based learning. And then I wrote a paper with him about it. We presented it at a conference in Germany this summer. And so that is, um, paragogy is basically how people, how peers can learn together. There's like pedagogy, which we all know, teachers teaching students, and andragogy, which is an individual self-directed, so paragogy is a little different. And so within collaborative lesson planning, probably just, it's just teachers, not really. Students can be involved, and I think they should be seeing the lesson plans. But, uh, but that's the bigger thing is teachers working together, so they're peers. And um, so that theory hopefully will help me help this come more to life. And then currently, um, Pete, in the earlier this year, PDPU reimagined itself, peer to peer university, if you guys don't know, um, reimagined itself. And now, instead of offering courses, in general, they offer a study group. A study group is an ongoing study of some subject, so there's no like time frame. Like the courses were six weeks, study groups just go for as long as you want, and there's not, um, yeah, so within that, there's less structure, which um, in some ways led to less going on, but it's a new medium, and I hope uh, it's a lot of potential. All right. What am I doing? What time is it? What time is it? Okay. So a after action review of year one. Uh, after action review is a, a military um, idea. Uh, fortunately, this PDF is no longer hosted on their website, but um, the after action review is done after you do something. So you go over, these are the four steps. You review what was supposed to happen, so for a mission or whatever. Establish what happened, so this mission was supposed to take down this place. What happened, it didn't happen. Determine what was right or wrong with what happened. Determine how the test should be done differently the next time. 
Okay, so doing that framework to my own um, year and with collaborative lesson planning, um, what was supposed to happen? What was supposed to happen was <coughs> teachers all over the world start collaborating, and um, there's a huge amount of resources available, and no new teacher has to start with from scratch. Um, that was what was supposed to happen. Um, so that was what happened. Well, that didn't happen. Um, I, I had some success at. Um, I'm here now, and I had some success on PDPU and in my own studies, putting more of my lesson plans online and figuring out how I can do this. Um, the terminal was right or wrong with what happened. What was right was that I kept studying it and that I kept trying to get more people involved and follow through on it and uh, made progress. What was wrong was that there wasn't a lot of, aside from me doing what I've already been doing, I didn't get a lot of other people involved in it. and. Um, there weren't a lot of teachers that weren't doing it that are doing it now. Determine how the test should be done differently the next time. So heading into the next, in the future, um, I really want to, I think the study group is going to kind of be the online home of what, how this is going to go. And um, I want to develop that out and really um, make explicit guidelines for how teachers who want to do this can do it, as well as um, <coughs> I just need to market more. Um, I need to get out there and go to schools or go to talk to college professors or whatnot and um, just get the work, beat the street, you know? And because um, it's not, one of the big themes I've taken away from this conference is it's not, just getting it out there is just not enough. Um, putting stuff online is great and it makes, it's good for ego stroking and talking with other people who like open stuff about how great open is, but um, in terms of results, it's not really meaningful. So until you get people, and a good example is the flat world knowledge. They've gotten into tons of schools and made other progress, or Khan Academy, or other people who are here. So follow their lead and try and actually try and market more. Um, OK. Conclusion, uh, CLP wants your help. So everybody here, um, I invite you to join the PDPU Collaborative Lesson Planning Group. There's also a Wikiversity resource on it, which I have not given a link to. Uh, but I will. And then contact me with ideas, please. That's my information. And um, yeah, uh, so floor is open to questions. Yes? Is there a format that you have for how the, what the lessons look like or like what form you have to upload your stuff in? Um, in terms of the format, no, there isn't something that's like a, a clear um, no, but I think that would be something that'd be good to establish sort of like a, perhaps within a certain discipline, each discipline have like sort of like an MLA for lesson plans so that people could use, interact with them much more easily. Um, in terms of the document format, um, it's preferable to use like open, open office um, or PDF as opposed to proprietary document formats just because proprietary document formats um, are limiting and who can reuse it. If you don't have the latest version of said software, you're not going to be able to access the document. And OpenOffice is free to download online and offers incredible functionality and support, or not support, but incredible functionality. And you can do everything you need to do as a teacher, in my opinion, there. And then those documents are much more easily accessible by anybody in the world. Or a text format is the ideal. Yes? So like, imagine if like the United States government mandated that all ESL teachers in the United States like go to this one central website where you have all their lesson plans, like resources, whatever, and like it's curated and stuff. It's like would that fulfill your vision, or would something in your vision still not be quite there if like something like that were to occur? If it's just like hypothetical. Yeah, um, I guess within that, that'd be like I don't know, climbing the mountain. I'd be at a different peak, so I'd have different view then. Um, I don't know what the next, I guess the next step of that would be making sure that like all of those ESL plans are shared with teachers all around the world and uh, just grow the network. And then hopefully out of that, like it would emerge that there's, you know, it doesn't need to be hundreds of them. There only needs to be a few. Right. And, uh, and I just focus on right. And then customize it by like, I'm teaching 20 students, I'm teaching 50 students, I'm teaching uh, students within ESL who have an intermediate level or like they should have an intermediate level, but they're actually beginners, even though they're in junior high. So then, and then you go. So you go through that. And you get the lesson plan you want, and then you use it or modify it and upload it with what 
you've learned. Yes? Do you have a, an organizational, like, like a plan for how, if I did have stuff that I wanted to share, like how would other people find it? Is, is it... You know I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, I made, I didn't link to it here. I made like a how-to. Oh, thank you. I made a how-to um, collaborative lesson plan. It's on this document actually, and that's like that outlines for uploading to Wikiversity, which is a sister project of Wikipedia. Okay. Um, Wikiversity is real nice. You can upload PDFs or open documents and um, choose your license, and it's there, and it's really easily findable by Google. Um, at this point, like not a lot of teachers use it or even people in this open education world use it. So, so I think, I think you got, I got to start, or people like, upload to Wikiversity, upload to Connections, upload to WikiEducator, upload to OER Commons, just get it like everywhere. And uh, archive.org is really good. And um, yeah, just get it as many places as possible. It, it seems like that is a major, um, I think if you want to get instructors involved, there has to be like a central. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so agree. Not. Yeah, I agree, and that currently is not uh, okay. reality, but I, I agree. Yes. Well, I wonder, like, if something would be possible, kind of like with the Jesuit, like the like this network of four hundred schools in the Jesuit thing. Mm -hmm. So what they're trying to do, based on like one of the presentations, is kind of make this common pool of OER. So it's be designed for use within the Jesuit network. That's cool. And so like, I wonder if that's a more practical idea. It's kind of not trying to have like one central clearinghouse like Wikiversity.net, but like kind of lots of little clearinghouses based on little interest groups where it's easier for them to adhere together. Yeah. Like come up with guidelines. And just, right. Yeah, no, I mean, within that, like, a Jesu person working at a Jesuit high school isn't going to teach a class the same way as a public high school or at, like, a, you know, like, a really nice private school in that east or something. It's a different world. So, yeah, so, that with, so like, subsections. And then also, on a similar note, like, there are, one sec, there are many different copyright licenses, and people are comfortable with different ones. And um, personally, I prefer public domain, like, dedicating it because that enables the most um, idea sex. But um, a lot of people don't like that for a lot of different reasons that are valid. And so, um, so like the attribution share like non-commercial people could only really be talking to themselves. And then um, attribution share like a little bit more, attribution a little more. But um, yeah, so sort of like subgroups of a big or, group. Or even just by like ESL. Like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Uh, then my comment was along those lines. There's a cool website called betterlesson.org. Okay. And they have a uh, collaboration with the KIPP schools. And if a KIPP school teacher uploads his or her lesson plans and they share them among that community because they're a similar teaching model. Um, nice. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, so that's a good example of somebody's actually, it's happening right now. That's something I should follow up on. And thank you. Um, any more questions? I had another one. Actually. Yeah. I wonder, just your experience, what is on your wish list? Like what would be, is there some application or some change or something that would help individuals like you do this better, faster, cheaper, and have a wider reach? Like what is, is there something that you wish existed that doesn't? Um, um, no, uh, I've got everything I need now. Really? Um, yeah, I just need to do it. And um, I guess the wish list would be like more attention to what I'm doing or the stuff I already put online, it would have more people reading it and commenting on it. But um, no, the tools are there already to do all this stuff. I mean, it's like the DS106 talk yesterday. The, the internet radio has been around for a while, and all these other tools have been around, and they didn't need, you know, just. It, it doesn't mean that I'm not, I mean, very much in favor of continuing development and new stuff that comes along, makes my life easier, is great. But um, the way I see it for me is just the only barrier is me just getting to the desk or going to people talking about it. Awesome. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Is there anything in the... Yeah. Um, you, can, you mentioned uh, Jim Groom, like his thing. So this kind of seems more like a like, repository <coughs> of stuff. Like, how do you see this maybe fitting into the vision of like open educational experiences that can't live inside a repository of like flashcards and curriculum? That's a great question. Um, I think, uh, well, first off, I think the study group 
is an open educational experience. Um, you can't, it's not somewhere that you're actually, like I want the lesson, you don't put your lesson plans there. Put your lesson plans elsewhere. And you just kind of talk about it there and like, so that's ongoing. Um, within the collaborative lesson planning, um, I think I want to make that, just try and develop that out. Um, within me teaching English, um, I was actually pretty inspired yesterday by the success of DS106 and the most massive open online course, or MOOC, even though Groom said his wasn't a MOOC, kind of is. But, um, yeah, I think, like, I was thinking of trying to do a uh, MOOC for uh, English, like for ESL. For, um, I've developed a textbook for ENG 099, Conversational American English, and I think I'd like try to offer that as a MOOC, and then just get lots of people involved. And, because I think the open education, I think the experience is the big thing. Um, the resource content, oh, and also like, so this is an example of another thing that I did in my lesson plans, like, I put on Wikiversity, put a semester's worth into this book, and that took like five minutes. But, because Wikipedia is a really nice thing where you can make a book, and it's on Wikiversity, the same plugin, you just put it together, and then it comes to you like within the week. And um, so any of you can buy this now if you want, um, but like, nobody's used this, right? you know, so it's like right here, really easily used, but hasn't happened. So, um, so that was kind of a tangent, but um, any other questions? I guess another question. Am I, have you looked at Japanese methods? They're actually very big. Um, no, I've not explicitly looked at Japanese methods. Um, I was in Japan teaching English, and um, in my experience, certain it's up to the teacher um, if they were interested in working together or not for very good reasons. Um, some teachers, some like Japanese natives, didn't like working with me because they'd have bad experiences with other foreign teachers who were only there for a year, don't care about their job, who, so on and so forth. So it's actually more work for the Japanese teacher to incorporate the foreigner than it is to just just have them in the room and once in a while have them do something. It makes the their job easier. Um, now I would say I was also in a small town, so within terms of like Japanese government policy or like stuff that's going on in an avant-garde meta level in Japan. I have no familiarity with that, but I would say my experience was fairly common. And I'm not, that's not local to Japan, that's local to, in my experience, anybody, anybody who I've talked to who's done ESL abroad. Um, the local people interaction can be very hot or cold for valid reasons on both sides. Any other questions? Okay, um, well, thank you very much for your attention, and have a good day.